Hi, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness, and today I'm going to show you how to make this quilt called Hanging Out with the Homies. This quilt was made using fabric from Tula Pink's fabric line called Holiday Homies. And not only is this a great holiday line, but there's a lot of fabrics in the bundle that are great for all your use, like this fantastic plaid or this wood grain. This is one of my favorites. In addition to these smaller scale prints, there's these large prints with deer, geese, and dogs wearing holiday sweaters, so it's a lot of fun. This quilt was designed by Stacy Day, and you can find the pattern instructions and the templates in the link down in the description below. If you've never done foundation paper piecing before, which is what these ornaments in the center of each of the blocks is, this is a great project to sort of get your feet wet and give it a try. And if you've done foundation paper piecing in the past, the blocks should go together for you fairly quickly. In addition to the paper piecing, the sashing was made using traditional piecing techniques. I pieced this quilt using Aurifil 50 weight thread, and when I quilted it, I used Aurifil 40 weight thread. So I hope you're excited about making this quilt. I had a lot of fun making it myself, so grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, to get started, you'll want to print out your pattern instructions. On the last page of the pattern, there's a small square that measures one inch, and you want to measure that with your ruler and make sure that that indeed measures one inch. It's really important, especially for the templates that will be foundation paper piecing, because if the pieces print out smaller or larger than intended, then your sashing strips and the rest of your quilt won't come together as planned. So measure that one inch square if it doesn't measure up correctly you'll need to open the pattern in adobe reader which is free to download if you don't have that on your computer already and using your printer settings you'll want to print at actual size so if you do both of those things theoretically that one inch square should measure up correctly okay on the on the second page of the pattern with the fabric requirements there are different swatches of each fabric if you'd like to make the, the quilt the same as the cover quilt. If you want to use different fabrics, just use the swatches as a guide and perhaps write down what fabrics you'll be using instead. Okay, page three of the instructions is the cutting list. And if you've not cut with the fabric before, I just wanted to give you a quick tutorial on how to do that. So I'm gonna be cutting my outer border fabric and in the pattern, this is the outer border fabric, but I don't have enough fabric to cut according to the pattern because I only have a fat quarter and five eighths of an inch, five eighths of a yard is needed for this particular pattern. So I'm cutting my fabric B. And so I've chosen a red fabric instead. And to cut the width of fabric, you wanna just open out your fabric and make sure both of the selvages meet. So the selvages are generally um, have the threads and sort of um, little holes through the fabric. So that, that's the selvage to selvage. Now we're gonna be cutting with the fabric. So I'm just folding my fabric so that I can easily cut with my ruler. And the first cut for fabric B is a strip that's two and seven eighths by the width of the fabric. So I'm just gonna line my ruler up two and seven eighths, which is the, the last notch before three inches. So I just need one strip, one strip with a fabric. Okay, the next cut for fabric B is six strips that are each two and a half inches by the width of fabric. So it, if you just have a traditional ruler like this, you can go ahead and, and use that. I have this stripology ruler. It's designed by Gudrun Erla, and basically it has notches every half inch and it's really quick and easy to cut strips using this ruler. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rest of my strips using the Stripology ruler. So I need two and a half inch strips and I'm gonna line my zero marking on the ruler up on the edge of the fabric. And then I can just go ahead and put my Rotary cutter in the notch for two and a half inches, then five inches, and so on until I have the, the six strips.
Okay, with these strips, we'll have to subcut. So you'll need to subcut 16 squares that are two and a half inches by seven inches. So I'm just gonna lay out, I'll start with a couple strips. So I'm gonna lay two strips on top of each other and here's the fold. So they're both folded in half. So there's four layers of fabric to cut through. So I'm gonna use my stripology ruler again and I'm gonna cut the seven and a half inch strips. Just continue doing that until you have the 16 seven and a half inch strips. Then we'll need from the remaining fabric, we'll need to cut the rest into two and a half inch squares. So again, I'm gonna lay two, two strips on top of each other folded in half. And then I'll just cut those two and a half inch strips until I have 24. We'll need 24 of those two and a half inch squares total. Okay, so that's my quick tutorial on how to cut strips with the fabric and how to subcut. Use the cutting instructions in the pattern to cut the rest of the pieces that you'll need for the quilt. Okay, so you'll need to print out 16 copies of the pattern page with foundation A and foundation B on them. And the result from foundation paper piecing those will be this finished ornament. Let me show you a couple supplies that I personally like to use when foundation paper piecing. I like to use the Hugs and Kisses applique paper, and this is applique paper. One side of it is fusible and it's actually water soluble. So I've printed my foundation on the non-fusible side of this applique paper, and the fusible side is the side that looks shiny. So I, I like using these applique papers because they're water soluble. I don't have to remove the papers when I'm finished. The papers just stay inside the quilt until it's pieced, quilted, and bound. And then when you wash the quilts, then the papers just dissolve. So I like using these. And another tool that I, I like using when paper piecing is this roller by Violet Craft. And you can find this roller on her website. I have a link in the description below. And it just helps, instead of ironing after sewing each paper, I just like to use this roller and a couple passes with the roller um, sort of finger presses the fabric away from the seam on the, on the papers. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the foundation paper piecing. Because there's two templates on the one page, I'm going to go ahead and cut sort of right down the middle so I have two separate, two separate pieces to work with. Okay, we'll work with the top of the ornament first. So for the top of the ornament, you'll need the piece of fabric that you cut from fabric P in the cutting instructions. So this is my fabric P. And then you'll need the two pieces of fabric A, which is your, your white background fabric. So for paper piecing, I'm gonna flip to the wrong side of where it's printed. And I'm gonna center the fabric P piece right over, if you can see through my paper, the template for one. And I'm just gonna center it and make sure that the fabric overhangs where the seam allowance is. So the seam allowance is this light shaded area, the border around the outside. So I'm gonna place my fabric right there. And I sort of like to use the folding method. So what that means is flipping to the side with the template and where one and two meet, there's a line. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and fold it that line. So then I know that my fabric A piece needs to overhang that line by approximately half inch. So here's my crease over here. And now I'm just gonna slightly overhang that line. And because the line is on a diagonal, I want my fabric A piece to be in a diagonal also. So if you want, if you're using traditional pins, you can go ahead and pin those in place. And then we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine, flipping to the side where it's printed, and we're gonna stitch directly on top of the line 
where one and two meet. And when stitching for foundation paper piecing, you want to decrease the stitch length. So I like to use a one and a half millimeter stitch length. Um, what that decreased stitch length does is if you're using traditional paper and not water soluble paper like I'm using, by decreasing the stitch length, it creates a perforation. So when you're removing your papers, they easily perforate and tear and you can get those papers out of there. So decrease your stitch length and let's go over to the sewing machine. Okay, so again, we're sewing on this line in between segments one and two. Okay, we need to trim the seam allowance down to a quarter inch, but before we do that, you want to press the fabrics away from each other. So I'm going to press this fabric, fabric A, away. And you can either use a roller if you have one like mine, or your iron will be fine too, or even if you have a mini iron, that would be great. When you press that white fabric away from the dark one, you want to make sure that the fabric covers the entire... Um, segment two, including the seam allowance. And mine does. If yours doesn't, then that just means you need to, to pick that seam and re-sew it because it needs to cover the entire segment for segment two, including the seam allowance. Okay, now trimming down the fabrics. I'm trimming mine to a quarter inch and I have a white fabric and a dark fabric. So in order for the dark fabric not to show so much, when you press the white fabric away, it can be helpful to trim that dark fabric less than that quarter inch seam that you trim the white fabric. So by trimming that dark fabric further away, then it doesn't show when you press the fabrics away from each other. So if you're in a hurry like me, just cut both of those to a quarter inch seam. If you're more careful and like your quilt to look more professional, go ahead and trim that darker fabric a little bit further back than that quarter inch seam. Okay, now we're going to add the fabric for segment three. So it's another piece of white fabric, the same size as the first one. And again, using the, the folding technique, I'm going to fold it that line that's in between segments one and one and three. And I'm going to overhang the white fabric about a quarter inch past where the crease is. So about that looks fine to me. And again, that white fabric's on an angle just because the line connecting one and three is on an angle as well. So take this back over to the sewing machine and we're gonna stitch the line in between segments one and three. Okay, and again, we're going to repeat that same process, sort of finger press that fabric first to, just to make sure that it'll cover segment three, including the seam allowance. And if so, we're going to trim these fabrics to a quarter inch seam allowance and then also trim that black fabric back a little bit more. Okay, and then I'm going to use my roller to press that seam. Okay, once you've got this piece finished, um, flip to the side that's printed and we're going to cut, we're going to cut out that seam allowance along the, the faint gray line around the outer edge. If you prefer, you can use your rotary cutter, but since my scissors are handy, I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors right now. Okay, because my papers are fusible on one side, I'm going to go ahead and give mine a good press. And you can do the same thing with yours, even if it's not a fusible paper.
Okay, now we're going to move on to template foundation B for the pattern. So this is the, the body of the ornament. So for that, I've cut 16 different squares, the large square with the print, and you want to center that over segment one. And for this particular template, you'll need three different rectangles, which you cut from your background fabric. So with those three fabrics, I'm going to piece the sides and the top of this body of the ornament. So I'm going to flip to the printed side again and find segment two. And I'm going to fold along the line connecting segment one and segment two. Okay, so at that fold, I'm just going to overhang. So here's my crease right here. I'm just going to overhang that white fabric a quarter inch past that, that fold right there. Okay, so that's what that should look like. I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch the lines between segment one and segment two. Okay, so here's my stitching line that I just stitched over at the sewing machine, and we need to trim this again down to that quarter inch seam allowance. So that means we'll be cutting the corner off of this blue fabric, and then I'm just going to additionally trim that blue fabric a little bit smaller. Okay, and then I'm going to use my, ro my roller to press that white fabric away. Okay, so now we're going to add segments 3, 4, and 5 in the exact same manner. So I'll show you how to sew segment 3, and then you can go ahead and sew segments 4 and 5 on your own. So for segment 3, again, I'm going to fold at that line. And then add another rectangle. So again, here's my crease right here. I'm going to overhang that white fabric a quarter inch past that crease. Okay, again, we're cutting that seam down to a quarter inch. Trimming that blue fabric down a little bit smaller. And then I'm using my roller to roll that white fabric away from the seam. Okay, so after you've added the other segments so that you have four on each one on each corner, this is what it should look like. Okay, so now we're going to add segments six, seven, eight, and nine. So let's do six first. Again, fold on the line between six and two. And you'll need a bigger piece of a rectangle for this line. And again, we're going to overhang that, that crease by about a quarter inch and take it over to the sewing machine. Okay, so again we need to trim within a quarter inch of the stitching line and again as always make sure that your fabric is covering the entire portion of segment six. So I'm going to trim that seam allowance and then also trim that blue fabric back an extra little sliver. Okay, and use my roller to roll that fabric away from the seam. Okay, so this is what it should look like once you've attached segments six, seven, eight, and nine. So now we have two more long rectangles to attach, which are on the left and, and right sides, 10 and 11. 
So I'm going to attach 10 first. I'm going to fold again at that line right over here. And then I'm going to overhang the fabric strip about a quarter inch past that crease. And again, you want to make sure that that fabric is going to cover those seam allowances on the top and the bottom of 10. Okay, so now when we're trimming that seam down to a quarter inch, you'll notice that we have all these other fabrics back here as well. Those will be trimmed down too, just sort of to eliminate the bulk in that area. Okay, and then I'm, again, I'm gonna use my roller to roll that seam. And we'll repeat the same process to attach that remaining rectangle to segment 11. Okay, so this template is finished and all that remains is to trim down to the seam allowance. So again, that seam allowance is that faint gray borderline around the outer margin. So I'm just going to cut with my scissors and again, feel free to use your rot rotary cutter to make it more precise. Okay, so this is what it looks like and we to finish the ornament we just need to attach the template that we sewed earlier and this is where it's going to go. We're going to flip it down so that the fabrics are right sides together. I'm going to use a few wonder clips just to, to pin that in place and then we're going to sew using a quarter inch seam allowance and you know where the quarter inch seam allowance is because this borderline right here is that quarter inch. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew right down this line from one end to the other. Okay, after you sew that seam, we're just gonna press that seam open. So this is what the finished ornament looks like and you'll need to complete 16 of these for the pattern. Okay, so in your cutting instructions, you should have cut your rectangles of chartreuse fabric into half right triangles and left triangles as well. So to do that, I basically cut that rectangle on a diagonal and it resulted in these pieces right here. And this is what they look like when cut. So with your template A fabrics, you should have your white background fabric as well as your outer border. And both of those will be pieced the same way with the chartreuse fabric. So to start piecing, you're going to lay out the chartreuse piece right sides together with the white fabric and the top corners are going to be aligned. So that bottom edge of the chartreuse fabric is going to hang off the white fabric. We're going to sew this edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. I forgot to change back to my normal stitch length, which is two and a half millimeters. So go ahead and do that because you won't be needing it um, after the paper piecing is finished. But this is what that seam looks like. And I'm just gonna press that green fabric away from the seam. So for now, I'll just finger press that. 
Okay, we're going to add a second triangle over here. And again, here's the fabric. It's going to go right sides together with the white fabric. That top corner will be aligned. And we're going to sew again using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, that's what it looks like. And again, we're going to press that chartreuse fabric away from the white fabric. Okay, so I've got assembled um, the white background fabric with the chartreuse triangles at the top, and you'll need 80, you'll need to piece 80 of these. And the red is my outer border fabric, again with the chartreuse on each corner, and you'll need 20 of these. It's really important to trim these down. So I'm going to align my ruler at that top corner of the red fabric, and I'm going to align it at a quarter inch on my ruler. So this dot right here, that's a quarter inch away from the edge of the ruler. I'm gonna line that dot right at the top of that red corner of the triangle. And I'm gonna trim that top edge. And the reason we're trimming that top edge like that is because we wanna conserve that point. So because we're piecing the sashing strips using a quarter inch seam allowance, you want the, corner, the top corner of that red triangle to be a quarter inch away from the top edge of the fabric. Okay, so once that's done, the height of this piece needs to be two and three eighths of an inch. Okay, so I see I didn't cut this straight. So I'm gonna go back and double check that it's straight and a quarter inch across. There we go. Okay, so the height of this piece again needs to be two and three eighths. So I'm aligning my ruler at two and three eighths, and the fabric piece needs to be two and a half inches wide. So I'm also aligning my ruler at two and a half inches wide. So two and three eighths gives me a piece that looks like this. And you'll do the same trimming process for all of your white pieces and all of your outer border pieces. Okay, so with these white background triangles, we're going to complete 40 pieces that look like this. So to do that, you'll need the two and a half by three and a half inch rectangles cut from the white background fabric, and you'll need two of these pieces with the triangle fabric. You're gonna sew each of these to the rectangle using a quarter inch seam allowance, press the seam open, and the finished piece will look like this. So complete 40 of these. Okay, so in step seven of the pattern, you're going to piece these sashing rows with your white background fabric. So to do that, you'll need four of these units that we just pieced previously, and you'll need five of these two and a half inch squares. So you're going to start with the two and a half inch square. You're going to sew this unit right sides together using a quarter inch seam allowance, and you're going to continue in that same manner. So you'll alternate a square and then another unit until you have what is shown in figure four in the pattern. Okay, in step eight of the pattern, you'll be referring to figure five on page five of your printout. So for that, you'll need your, your border fabric. So my, my border is red. So you're gonna start with the two and a half inch square of your red fabric, one of your piece triangles, and then your seven and a half inch strip. And you'll continue alternating so that your sashing pieces look like figure five. So you'll need two of each. Notice that there's two different borders. There's a horizontal border and the vertical border. Okay, in step nine of the pattern, you'll be piecing strips using your ornament pieces that you foundation paper pieced. So you'll need five pieces just like this and your ornament blocks. And you're gonna alternate on each end, you'll have that piece triangle unit, then an ornament block, and then so on. The triangle unit, an ornament block, and you'll piece that using four of the ornament blocks, and you'll have five of these triangle units. And on the other end, as you'll notice, there's another piece triangle block. So you'll, you'll complete these into four rows, four rows that look just like this, and you can go ahead and lay out your ornaments in whatever manner that you choose. 
Thanks so much for sewing along with me today. I can't wait to see your finished quilt. If you make one of the hanging out with the homies quilts, feel free to join my private Facebook group. There's a link in the description below and post photos of your finished project there. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see future videos from me. And remember, if I can do it, so can you. 50. <coughs> I was almost done. No, not if you make one of these.